seen a medium affect people more than comic books. You'll do anything for them. It's, it's, um, it's like being really, really in love, but um, someone that can be totally mean to you sometimes. <laughs> You're like, uh, what can I do? I'm in love. I mean, at one point I was like thinking, how can I get a bed in here? I mean, you, you don't want it to be like, so I can just sleep and then get up and work. And if you're at that point, that's not healthy. <laughs> that's not healthy. You need to go out of a place. Pretty much from the moment I could walk or talk, I was drawing, and um, my dad would, was very encouraging of that, and my mother as well, but my dad being an artist, um, kind of, if I wanted a dress or I wanted toys or anything like that, he'd kind of just sort of vague out, but if it was anything artistic, he'd buy it for me in a second, and so I really had that installed in me. And um, yeah, it can get pretty obsessive. Just trying to trying to get things right, you know. You, is that the most dynamic angle, or is that conveying the story enough? Or you know, you know, have I weighted my page properly? I mean, like you just obsess, obsess, obsess. You can really question your mental state. <laughs> as someone was saying to me, you know, that if I got really signed to a big label in comics that I'd, um, I'd have to uh, assume that I'm going to have a comic book widow husband. And I was like, what? Why would I have a comic And they said, that's what happens to everyone. They're called the comic book widows. They just never see you ever again. They just go into a studio hole and you never come out. I like to be a bit more expressive. So I don't, I think that if I'm thinking too much about it, I'm going to lose the magic. I like to sort of just have a lot of it just flow out of me a lot of the time. My paintings are a lot more expressive for me and they're a chance for me to not feel so um, bound up. I've got, I've got a lot of things that I, I, I want to express and so um, I kind of use my paintings for that. Right now, the comic that I'm working on is a submission that was requested by 2000 AD, uh, English publication. The whole reason I got into comics, um, this publication. Um, and it's, they sent me a script, told me to go for it. So I penciled it and now I'm inking it. And it's called Tell Goof. And it was really hard. <laughs> Really, really hard. <laughs> I thought I was gonna go nuts on this one. I, I ruined myself <laughs> doing this stuff, you know what I mean? Like I screwed up my shoulder, I, I, you know, I lost sleep. So at least I know that I put in everything I had when I did it. So I can say, yeah, you know what, I did that, I did that to my full potential. Essentially, I, I don't really feel as though um, the art world knows where to put comics right now. There's, a, you know, generally a sort of like a, a subsector of galleries that accept sort of street art, lowbrow art. I mean, I kind of get put in the um, urban contemporary street art, um, lowbrow art category, and so I tend to sort of just sort of. Um, go to galleries that show art of that calibre normally, but there aren't a lot of um, comic artists that do have shows like that. Painting is a great release for comic artists and, and it's a way to express ourselves in a different vehicle, in a different way, without having to tell a 
an entire story. You know, we can tell one story in one picture with just a couple of characters. It's quite a desired medium for expression for comic artists. Uh, this is my dealer gallery, Eyeball Kicks. It's a boutique shop that uh, shows popular culture art and urban contemporary art. Uh, these are uh, one of the last, or two of the last paintings I did um, entitled The Devil's Henchman and Lucid. Uh, they're two of my characters that I came up with um, loosely just for one-shot comics. I mean, I started drawing up these characters um, sort of loosely inspired by the cartoon Pinky and the Brain. Um, it's kind of like, you know, the, the really intelligent, cynical mastermind and the sort of thuggish stupid guy kind of thing and then they just sort of developed into um, these characters that were called the devil's angels originally the devil's henchmen and um, then I, I started going off into a sub sort of uh, concept about them actually working in w what is hell but is actually a government building but they have to go through a, a massive process to get um, promoted to like something like data entry or something <laughs> and so those characters sort of developed into that story. Even places that have nothing to do with um, popular culture art or anything like that I like to go to to get stimulated by you know contemporary galleries just to get that different part of your brain working because you can get stuck in an artistic rut of the same neural pathways and you never actually create anything original because you get stuck in that artistic loop. If I go to the library and the resource area as well and just open books and look and just get visual, it's like feeding your, your files for images so that when you, know, you go to paint, you've got this file of imagery just flicking over. Um, so the resource section in the library, the Wellington Library is amazing. Um, it's fantastic and I go there a lot. I think a lot of the time I write um, about how I'm feeling at that time and you know what kind of um, in a way what I want to happen but it isn't happening or or what is really happening inside of me. Um, so a lot of the time it'll be a way for me to communicate how I'm feeling and I'll create a character to reflect that time, just even for a moment. It might even just be the essence of a character and then um, then it just transforms into a, its, its own life. This is um, uh, the comic that Simon and I have been working on. Um, on this project, uh, Tomo, who we're pitching to Heavy Metal Comics, um, it's a comic based on um, a girl going through her um, personal challenges of her subconscious and her inner demons as she's meditating and she's realising that she needs to release herself from um, holding on to reality and just um, fall and allow herself to be consumed in order for her to work through them. It's not on a bio but it's, it is, I mean, it's about, any, it's about the human condition and we're all a part of the human condition so in a way it is autobio. Um, but it's um, it's definitely more about um, each individual person's own um, mountain they have to climb, whether that's to do with their past or to do with their ego or to do with um, their insecurities. We've all got that mountain that we've got to climb, or the, you know that cobra we've got to look in the eyes kind of thing.